Good afternoon all and welcome to Pipes Thursday. I trust everyone is safe and well. In today's Pipes class, Christopher will be covering the water module. As always, please feel free to use the text chat service in your GoToWebinar floating dialog to ask us any questions you may have during Chris's presentation. So without further delay, Chris, please take it away. Thanks, Charles, and welcome everybody to this webinar. Today we'll be looking at adding a future extension to an existing water network. We'll then be looking at fire hydrants and all the components that go with it. Let's go ahead and have a look at the area we want to add to our network. So in this location over here, I've got some CAD items that I've drawn up and I'd like that to be added to my network. You can see that these entities have been made as a CAD line in the layer called CAD of pipes. I've drawn them up neatly and exactly of where I want to tie them in and offset them from the boundaries as I would like. Before I import them, just want to go to my defaults and check what kind of pipes I'll be bringing in. I think for this location, they can all be the 110 diameter. Class 9 is fine for that. And a bedding class C is also perfect. I'll then go to File, Import, Convert from CAD, and I'm just going to bring the one type of pipe in and I'll hide the layer once it's imported. The CAD layer that I'm using is CAD, uh, the CAD of pipes, which we previously spoke about over here. Okay, yeah, so 123 pipes have been brought in and there's 109 nodes. It's still not part of the network, so I'd like to contribute that to the network. Okay, I want to identify the nodes before I select so I can see what kind of questions it's going to ask me. So I'll just go to nodes and I'll say ID. I'll also switch the annotation on. Great, now I can go and say graphical draw pipes. And I can select this one and snap to here and even though I haven't snapped, I'm going to say end pipe and I'm going to say split the pipe and insert the node. So now we've split the pipe and we've inserted the nodes. To check that everything's separate, we know that it's now added it to the network. You can now go and say join pipes. So we'll just select that and we remove that pipe. Great. So that is that done. We can now focus on the hydrants. When looking at the fire hydrants, the very first item that you want to look at is the fire risk categories. We'll go to tools, catalogs, and look at our fire risk categories. Here you can see that we've added the CSIR values. You are more than welcome to add your own values in. Looking at the different fire risk categories, we have the minimum fire flows. We also have minimum fire flow per hydrant. We will then also have how many hydrants will be active during the analysis. So when one fire hydrant is active, will it only be that one in the case of the low risks or will it be a number of fire hydrants all in that vicinity? We'll have the minimum residual head as well as the minimum distance spacing apart. And then we'll also have your fire durations for each one. We can close that. For the first half of the fire hydrant placements, I would like to use a higher risk categories. We'll go into this area over here. I'll just do a zoom window and I'll place my fire hydrants accordingly. I'll first need to set my defaults for the placement. So I'll go to settings, hydrant defaults and I'll choose the higher risk category. You can then choose your nominal diameter as well as your height above the natural ground. Here again, you can view your categories again, but we've already looked at that, so we'll press OK. I can then go to graphical, draw hydrants, and here you can see your radius for placement. I know that I'd like to place the hydrants where it can best serve a number of streets. If I place it at this location here, it's going to indicate that it has snapped to the node because it's within one meter from that node. I can then go and place 
extra hydrants. If you need to put a hydrant in a location where there isn't a node, Civil Designer will indicate which pipe it will connect to and ask you whether you want to split the pipe and insert the node. We will say yes, we'd like to split the pipe. There you can see the pipe has been split with a new node and a fire hydrant attached. Now, I don't know about you, but putting a node at this location won't really serve these streets as well. So I'm just going to go and place a node and in split the pipe in each of these locations to serve these streets as well. So you can choose how you cover. This might be a lower risk. Here you can either snap to the node or split the pipe. I clicked in this location here, so I'd prefer to, to find the nearest node and connect to that. We can now go over to a lower risk, so we can first go to settings and change our hydrant defaults to a low risk. We can then go to graphical and draw our hydrants. You can see that the radius is a lot bigger in this instance. I'll just put on a few more hydrants. With more time on your hands, you can really uh, be a little bit more fussy of where you place your hydrants. Great, so now I've got my placement of my hydrants. Let me just press spacebar to add a few more. With more time on your hands, you could probably do a better job than I did right now. Let's go and analyze this fire flow. So we'll run the fire flow analysis and we'll say start. We can then look at the messages and it'll bring up that there's very low pressures. So this is something you can adjust with your actual network to these fire flows. Here you can see you've got insufficient fl flow at these locations during your analysis. So this is an indication that you need to up your pipe sizes or increase your water coming into your network. We can also look at this with a color scheme. You'll remember if we go to our fire risk categories, we can say that the residual head should be 15 and the other one was six. So let's close that. Let's have a look at the color schemes and what is available to you. We go off to the hydrants. We can see that our color schemes are available for groups, fire risk categories, required flow, actual flow, and your residual head. If we look at the fire risk categories, we can press OK and there you can quickly indicate what your fire risk categories are. Let's change this to the residual head. Now remember it was seven for the low risk. Let's change that to be a color ramp of green to green, but we'll change these to be pen one.
and we can press OK. Here you can see that during the analysis, these ones are having a pressure issue with lower than 7, where these are coping just fine. But remember that these ones are running with no others open during the radius, where these are open with others in the radius also open at the same time, resulting in a lower pressure. So you will need to bring up your pressures in this area as well to cater for the more hydrants open at the same time. You can also look at your fire flow analysis and switch over to your different results based. Here you can see while this hydrant is open, these are just fine. When it comes to creating a plot for your layout, it's very important to have the setting out information for your hydrants to be exactly where you'd like them to be. I'll go and switch off the fire hydrant radius for now. That is up to you to choose whether you want that to be switched on. And I'll go and say plot generate. I'm going to choose the plan sheet file. And I'm also going to choose to have my layout dynamically in my drawing. So when the design changes, so do the drawings update as well as the setting out tables for the hydrants will also update. Let's go and add our viewport. Actually, I'm happy with that viewport, so I'll press Escape and I'll press Next. Let's just clear all of those and just say we want to list for the fire hydrants. Not too worried about that now. And here you can see we've got our list. I can go and say CAD graphical move and I'll just place it in a better location. This table is completely customizable to your fonts and how you would like it. It is also dynamically linked to your model. Any changes to your model, this table will update. I see I still got three minutes left, so I just want to cover some items that are fairly new to Civil Designer's water module. Let's go back to the drawing. And if we look at analysis, you will see that you've got your uh, quantities. We'll just go through that quickly. You'll see that you have your materials, diameters, classes, and lengths, your excavation lengths, excavation volumes, and your bedding volumes. You'll also see that we have our bends and junctions. Yeah, you can see that you've got your bends along the pipe in the nodes your junctions, the summary of your bends, and your other fittings, like end caps and crosses and T's. And lastly, we have the connection quantities. Here you can see you've got the number of saddles for the sh single connection and double connection for the short and the long, the number of saddles and the pipes that it's connecting to, and the length of your 20, 25 and 40 mil pipe. I hope this webinar was informative to you. Please let us know if you have any ideas for future webinars. We'd gladly like to hear from you. Have a great day further. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Chris. That was awesome. And thank you to all who attended today. For those of you who have missed any of our previous webinars, please remember that all our past webinars are posted on our website under the services pull down menu on the FAQ video page. See you all tomorrow at the same time, same place, using the same link for our weekly design center class. Thank you, have a great afternoon and goodbye.